Steven Cureño, KO Art of Sports, right here with matchmaker extraordinaire Robert Diaz. Uh, man, you really did it with this one, man. This is a, a great fight. I feel like it's, uh, I've been telling Robert, Virgil, and, and they've been kind of uh, boxing fans that feel all alike feel this is like the perfect step for, for Virgil right now at, at this point in his career. It's a dangerous fight. It's a dangerous fight. It's a real fight. But that's who Virgil is. And that's how much his team, how much we at Golden Boy believe in him. And it's what boxing needs. Step up fights, real fights, risky fights. When you have that, everybody wins. It, it's not about so much whose hand is raised at the end of the night. Boxing wins. Okay, let's look at it this way. Worst case scenario. Virgil doesn't come out with the victory, comes out with a defeat. He's young. All the great fighters in the past lost, and guess what? You learn from these mistakes, you learn from these defeats, and you could only get better. I'm not saying he's going in there losing, and we didn't take it for that, but that's worst case scenario. And obviously best case scenario, he continues doing what he's doing in the fashion that he's been doing it, and it just proves to the world, look, because no matter what, there's always that fan that says, yeah, but his, this opponent was past his prime, this opponent, they can't say that on Saturday night with me machine. This is a guy that only has one loss to one of boxing's best fighters, pound for pound. And this is a very good comparison of where Virgil's at. Because should he do it in a faster fashion, people are gonna be like, oh, wow, this guy's for real now. Should he do it in a, uh, it goes longer? It's okay too, because the experience he picks up before we go into those big world title fights is very valuable. So again, I'm saying it right now, it is a dangerous fight, but that's what they're supposed to be at this level. They're not supposed to be, okay, another tune up, another tune up, and that speaks wonders of who Virgil Ortiz is because he doesn't want hand-me-downs. He wants real fights to prepare him for the big fights. And, and, you know, I really feel this is a big fight. Like like you were saying, the, his uh, Igus' has only loss is Terrence Crawford. And, and that was Terrence Crawford, who's, I want to say, two, three-time world champion already. Or Virgil's only 18 fights in. Is that, is that maybe a comparison that people are missing when they compare, when they eventually compare this fight with Virgil against, you know, Mean Machine versus, versus TC? 100%. Absolutely. A lot is expected from Virgil from the fans because of the fast track that he's been on, but they forget he's only 18 fights into the game, or 17 at the, mo the moment, his age. A lot of his peers are not doing what he's doing at this level. A lot of his peers haven't done what, they, what he's done. I mean, he's fought and beaten uh, three former world champions, Hooker, Herrera, and Salgado. At 17 fights, fought three former world champions. His last one was against one of very dangerous right so every time he steps into the ring you're going to have the love you like any fighter i mean there's going to be the support and there's going to be the criticism there's going to be the haters he just needs to keep doing what he's doing he's doing phenomenally well at what he's been doing this is a kid that lives eats sleeps dreams boxing he's very dedicated i think we're going to see a different style in this fight uh, i think we're going to see new things with virgil in this fight because obviously what he has in front of him uh, we'll see even the best version, the best version to date, because he can only keep getting better. He's a, a big kid too, man. Um, you know, 147. I, I want to say last he was at 140 in 2018, so he's been at 147 for three years now. But like you said, he's young. I want to say 22, 23. Do you see a, a move to 54 soon, or you think he's pretty settled in at 47? I mean, eventually, eventually. I, I mean, Virgil is big. He's, he's still young. He's still going to be growing. I don't think we've even seen yet his physicality really fill in, but who knows, he might be 160 before his career is, you know, uh, call it a day. But right now, as long as he can comfortably make 147, there's some name, there's some history to be written. Obviously, the world title before that, Saturday night. Yeah, I can't wait, man. It's gonna be it's gonna be fireworks. Uh, his division is is on fire right now, like you said. Uh, recent recent news: uh, Earl Spence uh, had eye surgery. Not gonna be fighting Manny Pacquiao. What what are your thoughts on that? And and just what are your thoughts on Pacquiao uh, Ugas now, the the new main event we have? First of all, uh, send all our best to to Earl. Fast recovery. Wishing you nothing but the best. You know that from uh, not from today, from a long time. Um, 
it's part of boxing. It's a contact sport. It's unfortunate. But remember, for them to get ready for a fight, they're actually fighting on a weekly basis, two, three times a day, probably going into a Pacquiao fight over 100 rounds. Um, he's young. He's been back from worse. Um, There's just a, a hurdle that he has to get through and hope, you know, for the best. As far as Manny and Ugas, I mean, look, somebody's loss is somebody's gain. Ugas, all of a sudden, now he's in the big fight. That's great for him. Uh, great for the Cuban community, the Cuban boxing fans. This is a, a, a major, major fight in the history for, for Cuban boxing. But let's not forget who he's facing. I mean, time and time again, you say he's too small, he's too old. No, time, the age is caught up and he proves us wrong and wrong and wrong over and over and over. I think we're gonna be odd. we're gonna be at awe again of saying, man, this guy's an ageless wonder. He's one of those unique fighters that only come once every hundred years, and enjoy it while it's still here. Uh, I normally don't watch boxing, um, to be honest. Uh, when when it, I'm not, there's not those fights. I'm gonna watch, and it's not so much I'm watching boxing. I'm watching Manny Pacquiao now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tune in because I, I'm still at like, how does he keep maintaining this level? This speed. Nobody would criticize him. Nobody would blame him if he went out and looked for a YouTuber or he, looked, you know, for an influence and said, "Let me do an exhibition." Nobody would. Everybody's doing it. so. For him to be fighting, obviously, Errol Spence, who he was supposed to be fighting, it's like at your age and you're still fighting the top guys. Geez, how long are you gonna keep doing this? I mean, he's another Bernard Hopkins, but uh, wish him all the best to both of them. I think it's gonna be a very fun, exciting fight, and. Uh, I think Manny Pacquiao could stop him in the later rounds. Yeah, we're we're going to see in, in about a week. Another guy uh, uh, still at it, um, the, the boss man, uh, Oscar De La Hoya is fighting Vitor Belfort. Man, uh, seeing them at the press conference, do you see Vitor's arms in the suit? They were, it was like bulging out. I think they were custom made or something. <laughs> you know what? That, you could never take away that fire from a fighter, from a real fighter. Oscar in his day was fighting everybody, and, and he continues showing that. This wouldn't have been, of course, my preference. Uh, I actually liked Anderson Silva after he beat Chavez Jr. This guy's big, man. He's, he looks strong. He's, he looks like he has 40 pounds over Oscar, and, and at least 20 of them are going to be muscle. But <laughs> Oscar, is, is, he knows what he does in that ring. I think, you know, seeing him, when it, when it first began, when there was first mention, nah, he's just joking. He's just kidding. He's just... But little by little, as we started seeing him get in shape and, and the speed and you see him moving around, it's still there and the jab is still beautiful. I think, and I'm hoping, we'll all be surprised uh, come the 11th. Uh, I see Oscar going in there and trying to get that knockout, but he has to be smart and obviously careful because this guy will have a lot of weight over him. It's dangerous. Yeah, it definitely is. Um, obviously, like you said, no, nothing's guaranteed, right? But Oscar's talking about Canelo, to talking about getting Canelo in the ring at 48 um, after this fight, you know, if he were to win this fight. Is that something you, you guys are realistically looking at? I mean, I know Oscar, you know, is, is I'm sure he's game because he's a fighter, you know what I mean? But uh, is that something re really you feel Golden Boys and, and Triller Oscar's going to gonna go towards? I have no idea on that. Look, September 11th is first, and you never know. Hey, Oscar, you know, depending on how September 11th goes, Oscar's going to want something and big, and that'll be up to Oscar. That might be it. <laughs> Robert, appreciate your time, man. Thank you so My much. Pleasure. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Tell the fans where they can follow you, brother. Thank you. Hey, you can follow me on Michelada Time. I love hearing from you guys. Anytime you have suggestions or, or, or wants of a fight, at michelada time.com. There it is. Thank appreciate you. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you again. Thank you.